Now, uh, this is the start of, uh, of part seven, advanced color printing techniques. Okay, you're confident when printing average middle of the road digital images. This is, this is us here. We're looking at our own, uh, our own prints. But we feel that we're, we're, we're ready to take on board a higher level of color print quality achievement. Still using the monitor to guide <coughs> your subtle image editing changes, but you want to feel totally in control of your imaging process. Imagine if an important client came into your studio, gave you a rush job, and was literally standing over you, waiting for the final result to emerge from your printer. Uh, uh, he's going to dash off to a vital me uh, meeting which relies on your print efforts to secure a contract or future work for his business. No pressure then. You, you need to be in a situation where you uh, have totally eliminated everything that could possibly go wrong. Now this is the this is famous last words here, but let's attempt to, to do this. You need to eliminate things that often go wrong. The absolute nightmare in the, above, in the above scenario is the client arriving with a totally unsuitable digital image to print. It's low in pixels or bad in quality or even worse, simply a printed image for you to scan in a large and make wonderful. Now let's go through these problems one by one. Now, uh, Number one, client supplies a really low res image file, uh, low res in pixels. Uh, what I would do, I would try to resize the image, as we've mentioned before, to 180 pixels per inch, uh, image size the same as the required finished print size, and let Photoshop share the enlargement task with your printer driver. I don't know if, if uh, any of you have heard of Kai's Power Tools from years and years ago. That essentially was what that bit of software used to do. It used to, it used to optimize the, the pixel shape and the, uh, and the screening uh, methods so that it would make the best of a very small file. It was surprising how good it could be. And this basically is what we're saying here. So you're, you're resizing to 180 pixels per inch, image the same size as, as the required uh, finish print size, so if it's a 10.8, you create a document 10 by 8 and you size it up at 180 pixels per inch. Um, probably the most efficient method of printing from a very small file, such as a smartphone image. Now, many images are captured these, uh, this way these days. We've got to accept it, whether we like it or not. We, know, we need to know how to deal with this low level input. Uh, low in image quality. It's the next thing. Analyze on screen your problem at 100%. So size up the image at 100%. If it looks bad on screen at 100%, you don't stand much chance. Simply go back to the client and ask him if he's got a better quality version. You can show him there and then that it's not looking good at 100%. And you can tell him, look, if it doesn't look good at 100% on screen, it's certainly not going to look good on the printer that's going to pick out all of the detail that's there, and more importantly, it won't be able to render the detail that's not there. Ask the client if he's got a better quality version. Make him understand at the earliest possible stage, don't let him go out of the office, keep hold of him until you're satisfied that the quality of the input work that you're getting, you are going to be able to work with. Make sure that he understands at the earliest possible stage that his origination is very low quality. He may have just given you a thumbnail version by mistake, but it's a good thing to, 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 to put a, a stop on that straight away. Uh, a printed image or, a, or, or an, an, a neg to, to, to scan in. Now, unless you have a really high-end scanning in-house, you need to explain to your client uh, what a compromise in quality is asking you to make. My tip is to have a, a list of handy contacts nearby who can drum scan or you've got a flex tight scanner or, or a similar high-end scanning equipment 
who can give a really great quality high-end scan and a quick turnaround uh, for, for trade terms, of course. The answer here is to know the, in, the limitations of your own in-house equipment. If you've just got a flatbed scanner there, you know that you're not going to be able to deliver the, the, the print quality uh, required unless it's a pretty large origination print and you've got a pretty large origination flatbed scanner of good quality. So don't be afraid to go outside when the job demands it when we're dealing with uh, uh, with a, a scanning uh, uh, application. In this day and age, most of our input nowadays comes straight from the camera or it's transferred electronically. The second element to a more advanced approach to production color printing is for you to take your monitor uh, uh, to, uh, print, print accuracy to a higher level. Uh, invest in a high standard photographic monitor such as an ISO or, or, or similar and use an on-screen calibrator uh, and final visual adjustment so that your high-end monitor agrees to your visual perception to your cu custom profiled printer which is absolutely accurate for color and density so what that means is you make sure you've got your printer dead accurate you know it's dead accurate because when you produce the test image that's supplied by your supplier, it agrees totally with your, your supplier's certified accurate print. That means to say that your printer is, an, is a certified accurate color output device. What you then do is you get your monitor and you get it, you, you by all means you can use a monitor spider to get it in the ballpark of accuracy, but then finally you manually adjust your monitor so that the monitor appearance agrees to your print as far as your own perception of color and density because that's what matters. You need to be able to see the flesh tones on your monitor agree to what you know to be the dead accurate flesh tones that your printer is, is producing. Your printer is a constant and your monitor is constantly dying away. So you need to check this monitor to printer agreement pretty well, on a, certainly on a monthly basis. Some studios do it on a, on a weekly basis. Now, you should also buy a good quality pure white viewing light for accurately evaluating your prints. You can get them anything from about 40 or 50 dollars upwards and they're not that they're, they're worth their weight in gold because you've got one area where you can view your prints you can look at prints with your uh, with your client uh, you can both look at the prints with a pure 5000 degrees kelvin light it makes a huge difference to your own perception of viewing your prints it's very very important i, I would say it's it's uh, it's the it's the important third element uh, alongside making sure you've got a, a, a good quality modern inkjet printer, you've got a good quality uh, monitor, that third element is making sure that your viewing area is correct and make sure it's to the industry standard which is 5000 degrees Kelvin. Now in a busy studio uh, they usually check their monitor to printer agreement on a weekly basis and they jealously guard their print monitor settings. You take these two precautions, um, you don't accept bad input images, make sure your monitor is in agreement with your printer, that's the bedrock uh, of trouble free colour printing workflow. I've supported and given technical advice to thousands of photographic printing houses over the years and it amazes me how there is usually one basic element of good working practice that is being overlooked. You should check your entire print output. It will tell you a story. So if you've got a, if you've got a print job, don't just look at the first off or the final print. Spread the prints out and make sure each one is a winner and make sure you don't get a a variation through the through the print run. I've, I've seen production print studios where a recurring fault is there to be seen 
uh, in job after job, uh, which would otherwise be going out to the clients, had I not pointed out the issue. It seems obvious you should inspect each job carefully for problems. Keep your quality control standards high. I, I, I need to tell you this because if I, if I remind any of you and it, and, it, and it makes any of you out there bring your quality standards slightly higher and slightly more consistent, that little, that little area will, will be worthwhile. Having produced great work for your client, pack the finished job correctly in a strong case that presents your work to the best advantage. I've seen many finished jobs looking awful when they go through the they go through the post and they arrive at the other end. You open that package and it looks just looks like a disaster. It just looks like the 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 all the care that's been put into the job has just been destroyed. Now our own Marat Professional Photographic Inkjet paper boxes. Uh, Abigail, would you pass me a, a one of those little boxes for me, please? Now our own Marat Professional Photographic uh, uh, paper boxes. These boxes are pretty well the strongest in the industry uh, and you can actually use these boxes to house your print job and you'd send them out you know in a in a in a, in a, in a, a padded envelope and they look very they look very uh, 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 very, very professional. Now um, they protect your finished job to perfection Remember to insert your price list and business card in with each and every job you dispatch and make sure that you've included a strong call to action with regard to reprints and further work. Now, can you notice what I've just done here? We've gone beyond the slightly technical and we've gone into a little bit of marketing here. But I think it's important for us to mention this at this time when we're talking about packing your finished job. So what we're saying is you present your finished work beautifully and we're, we're great advocates of this. We, we, we spend a lot of money on the best possible boxes in the industry. Remember to insert your price list and business card in with each and every job you dispatch. Make sure you've included a strong call to action with regard to reprints and further work. Why not include a discount voucher to make sure your clients give you repeat business and always ask for their email address so that you can A, send them a courier tracking number so they know when the goods are going to arrive. That's an important job. But B, you keep their email address on your database so you can send them quarterly or monthly email offers or promotions uh, many of our customers k keep their clients' mobile phone numbers on a database so they can be texted with monthly offers or promotions. Now, this tip really works. We have some of our clients in various regions of the world, particularly Dubai, particularly in the, in the, in the Far Eastern uh, regions where everybody uh, tends to communicate via text. And... A, a, a gentle reminder every so often that you've got a, an offer, you've got a reprint offer, you've got this, you've got a special promotion via text works wonders. And if it works over in those regions, there's no reason why it shouldn't work in, in our own local region, either in Europe or in North America or wherever. Now, let's get stuck into advanced color printing techniques. So I'm, an old, I'm old enough to have had extensive experience of high quality darkroom print production. I used to work across the road from a CPL, Color Process Laboratories. At one time, this country's top color printing laboratory, and it was a color printing school. I worked with their color print manager for over a year during an interesting period of transition for them between darkroom and digital. And he actually occupied one of the parts of our factory for about a year. And we learned a lot from, from, uh, from this fellow. Uh, their darkroom production tended to follow three streams. And this is in the darkroom. This is, 
This is ancient history. They used to have high quality machine prints. They used to have high quality production hand prints, which usually were 10, 8 and above. And then they'd have a specialist area where they would create high quality premium, we call them hand prints, but the, the process changed depending on the, pro, on the, on the process. Uh, uh, it would be often large format and often specialist fi uh, finishes. It could be Cibachrome, it could be R-type, it could be fiber based. A lot of work was backlit transparency. Now, this was as it was before. After their successful transition into digital production, their new digital production streams turned into something fairly similar, funny enough. They had high quality machine prints, which meant that you, you had uh, a very low level of image editing, so not much going on in far, in far the, the, the software, but extremely tight quality control of high volume printing. It's a very, very successful area of their business. The second stream was high quality production inkjet prints. That means to say a medium level of image editing, so there's a certain amount of, of enhancement going on, individually printed and individually inspected. And the third stream was their high quality bespoke inkjet prints. Uh, extensive image editing if required, individually printed and individually inspected, and with a fair bit of client interaction. And sometimes the clients would come in halfway through the production process where they, were, they could discuss the, uh, the a particular job. Remembering that this, uh, this particular laboratory had extremely high-end uh, uh, high clients and this was the sort of work, that the, the sort of relationship that these clients uh, ex expected. Now, in addition, because at that time digital print materials were lacking certain qualities that darkroom prints had at the time, they did retain part of their darkroom processes for, for many years. Now, I suggest that we can copy these production streams now, slightly modified to allow for the fact that we've had fantastic improvements in materials and equipment. Now, for production digital color printing studios, I would suggest you have high quality production inkjet prints, very level, low level of image editing, uh, and you let your printer profile do most of the work. Trust your accurately calibrated monitor to warn you of occasionally when you would need to uh, edit your images. You apply tight quality control to catch the rogue prints which may slip through production. Be aware of time on job versus profit achieved equation. So remember that this is a very uh, pro a, 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 a very competitively priced stream of production so you need to make sure that your time on each particular image is kept to a, a, a minimum with the with the proviso that you've got to keep an eye on your quality uh, the modern stream uh, again high quality production individual inkjet prints a moderate level of image editing in proportion to the wishes of the client and requirements of the image. Trust your accurately calibrated monitor for editing guidance. Keep your edits subtle and be aware of differences between monitor and printer response to fine image adjustment. Now we're going to be dealing with this shortly. Tight quality control applied to finished prints. Be aware of time on job versus price of job equation. And finally, high quality bespoke image, uh, uh, bespoke inkjet prints. Uh, to, uh, once the client has agreed the price uh, and discussed image expectations, depending on the funds available for the job, you allocate the correct amount of time to edit your image either via on-screen guidance or in the case of extremely critical work, with the use of test prints to achieve exactly the client's brief. Tight quality control applied to the finished prints. Compare your estimated profit calculate, calculation you made at the end of the client meeting with your actual profit achieved. 
and modify your calculations for quotations in future if required. Bear in mind that nowadays the materials you have for your bespoke inkjet print production are, are many and varied. You have, you have canvases nowadays, you have acrylics, you have many, many uh, um, uh, methods of, uh, of selling your images to your clients. Probably the best way for you to handle this one is if you see one of these new uh, space age applications and you think, I'd really like to go for that. Let's say an acrylic application or a, some form of 3D or some form of high-end uh, uh, application that you don't know how to do yourself. For all you know, your own equipment and your own ink may be capable of, of, of producing this sort of work. All you need to do is to contact your, uh, your print material supplier, such as ourselves. We will have known about this material, this particular process, because it's our job to do it. And if we can't provide it, we will know where you can get this from.